Christina Macaluso. I'm a senior at UNC Chapel Hill, and I am pursuing a research project and independent study on Connie Converse with Dr. Naomi Andre as my faculty advisor. This has just been one of those projects where uh -huh. all I can say is yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Karina is so talented. This is just what should happen, I think, in college. And for this to be this extra project, she's doing a lecture recital, and I'm so excited to be involved. And I can't wait, March 1st. March 1st, coming up, Women's History Month. And 2024 is the centennial of Converse's birth, too. That's so incredible. It, it just, it works out really It's time. Well. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> I found out about Connie Converse um, whenever I was listening to some music on Spotify, like Gillian Welch, just like kind of folksy, like early 2000s folksy stuff. And then the algorithm just played one of her guitar songs from an album called How Sad, How Lovely that was um, recorded. It was released in 2008 um, after her music was discovered by a producer in um, New York who came across just some of her recordings of her singing in, in a kitchen. I looked at her kind of profile and I saw that she had piano and voice songs and I was just so excited. <laughs> and then I gave them a listen and I quickly learned that no one, none of my friends knew who she was, none of my colleagues, none of my like faculty mentors have ever, like no one had heard of her. And I had heard these songs and they were just stunning and I wanted to kind of showcase them in a way and like introduce people to this incredible um, composer and she's also a visual artist, she's a writer, she's a poet, she did so many things and this is just kind of like a very small slice of her life and legacy that I could highlight in. It is so exciting. Karina was um, a student in my first semester of teaching here at UNC Chapel Hill. I had been at Michigan for many years and that class on opera was so dynamic and exciting. She was a star among stars and when she she sent me an email mentioning Connie Converse and I was like no I hadn't heard of her and then we met in my office hours and I was like wow this is interesting Howard Fishman we've got the book here <laughs> um, had, this book just came out in 2023 last year mm -hmm. and she was someone who is a fascinating woman in American music history because I think she represents probably a lot of women. Connie Converse um, was a female American composer, um, visual artist, writer, poet. Um, uh, she specialized in conflict resolution, did some work editing, um, and she was born in 1924 and disappeared without a trace, Amelia Earhart style, in 74. We haven't found um, the VW bug that she drove away in. We don't know really anything about what has happened to her since. I found this story and I was really kind of captivated by it. And I came across her um, song cycle, Cassandra cycle for voice and piano. And it tells the story of Cassandra from Greek mythology, who um, in like summary, she was um, pursued by the god Apollo and then was gifted the, um, the gift of prophecy. And then whenever she rejected him, whenever he tried to make advances on her, um, he, Apollo cursed her to where she would be, she could still prophesize, but no one would believe her prophecies to be true. And this ultimately drove her into insanity because no one believed her. And in many ways, this song cycle parallels the kind of mental and emotional turmoil that Connie Converse was experiencing in her life at the time. And it kind of gives us a glimpse into um, some of the reasons why she disappeared and what was going on in her mind. And I think that this almost autobiographical um, cycle just serves as a good kind of way to showcase who she was and it was also the the last um work that she composed that we know of before she disappeared <laughs> one 
recording of this cycle and it's recorded by a soprano named Charlotte Mundy and it's in the album Connie's Piano Songs and that has been the only recording of the full cycle that I have been able to find and that is accessible to the public. There are no other recordings and listening to the tessitura of the music and kind of where it sits uh, the tessitura is also like this kind of like the sweet spot of the range, like where are you most comfortable singing? And sopranos, they tend to be comfortable higher on the staff and the majority of the cycle sits on the staff or even below it. So it implies that it would be sung by a lower voice and Connie Converse herself um, was, uh, she would likely be categorized as like an alto, mezzo, contralto, lower voice and it hasn't been recorded by a lower voice. So it's nice kind of getting to create my own artistic interpretation of it because there aren't many recordings that I can listen to to kind of get a sense of the pieces and I'm enjoying kind of getting to see where my voice fits in this cycle. This has kind of helped me understand the field of musicology a little bit more and it's reinforced the importance of knowing the context of my, the pieces that I'm singing. Historical context, context in the sense of when the composer um, composed the pieces in their lives. And as I've learned more about this song cycle and more about um, the history of Connie Converse and who she was, I keep discovering new things about it. And the first time I listened to the cycle, there were parts of it that were kind of like, playful and sounded fun, but then as I learned more about what was going on in Converse's life at the time that she wrote this, um, the like things just like had completely different meanings. And reading, sitting down and reading her poetry for the first time, um, and just like every other line, it was just like full body chills. <laughs> I think that this is the first kind of true passion project that I've undertaken because it's not a part of my degree requirements and it's something that I am just totally doing kind of on my own. I have just loved kind of getting to just absorb all of this information and be a sponge. I think that if you do choose to come that you will learn a lot more about a very important woman in history. When they...